The five lemma concerns a diagram comprising 10 abelian groups and 13 group homomorphisms between them. The groups are arranged in two rows of five, and the rows are exact. The top row is exact at B, C, and D, and the bottom row is exact at B prime, C prime, and D prime. We also assume that the four squares of the diagram commute. If, in addition, we are given that the vertical map from A to A prime is an epimorphism, and the vertical maps from B to B prime and D to D prime are monomorphisms, then we can deduce that the vertical map from C to C prime is a monomorphism, and this is the part of the five lemma which we're going to study first. To prove that the map C to C prime is a monomorphism, we simply have to show that its kernel is trivial. So let's suppose that C is an element of the kernel, mapping to zero in C prime, and of course mapping on to zero in D prime. Using the commutativity of the center right square, we see that C maps to an element D, which maps to zero down in D prime. We're given that the map from D to D prime is a monomorphism, so therefore this element D is equal to zero. Now exactness of the top row at C shows that there exists a B back in the group B, which maps to C. Using the commutativity of the center left square, we see that this element B maps to zero via B prime, where it maps to some element which we'll call B prime. Using exactness of the bottom row at B prime, we see there's an element A prime mapping to B prime. And now, since we're given that the map from A to A prime is an epimorphism, we find that there's an element A in A, which maps to A prime. Let's use commutativity of the leftmost square to track A around the other side of the square. And suppose it maps to an element A bar in B then A bar also maps to B prime along with B. Since we're given that the map from B to B prime is a monomorphism, the two elements A bar and B with the same image must in fact be equal. And now we can see that our original element C lies in the image of the composite map A to B to C, and since the top row is exact at B, this composite map is zero, and our element C was zero, which is what we wanted to prove. In conclusion, this shows that the, the first part of the five lemma depends on the exactness of the top row at B and at C, the exactness of the bottom row at B prime, and the commutativity of the centre right and centre left squares and the far left square. We also used the fact that the vertical map A to A prime was an epimorphism and the vertical maps B to B prime and D to D prime were monomorphisms. Dually, if we assume that the top row is exact at D and the bottom row is exact at C prime and D prime, and that the centre left and centre right and far right squares commute, and that the vertical maps from B to B prime and D to D prime are epimorphisms, and the vertical map from E to E prime is a monomorphism, then we can deduce that the vertical map from C to C prime is an epimorphism. Let's see how the argument goes. This time we need to choose an element in the target group C prime and show that it comes from some element back in C. Let's call the image of C prime in D prime little d prime and following on to E prime of course that maps to zero because the bottom row is exact at D prime. Moreover we're given that the map from D to D prime is an epimorphism so there's some D in D mapping down to D prime. Using commutativity of the far right square, we see that D maps to some element E, which maps to zero. But we're given that the right-hand vertical map is a monomorphism, and so this new element E is actually equal to zero. And using exactness of the top row at D, we see that there's an element C mapping to D back in the group C. We're not quite done yet, because if we use commutativity of the center right square, we can deduce that the image of C, let's call it C double prime in C prime, maps round to D prime in D prime. But we can't say for certain that C double prime is equal to C prime. What we have is two elements, C double prime and C prime, both mapping to D prime, and so their difference 
c prime minus c double prime maps to zero. By exactness of the bottom row at c prime, this difference comes from some element b prime. Using the fact that the map from b to b prime is an epimorphism, we see that there's some element b in b mapping down to b prime. And using the commutativity of the centre left square, we can track this element b the other way around the square. Let's say it maps to c bar in c, then it maps down to c prime minus c double prime in c prime. Now we have two elements of the group c, c bar and c. The first mapping to c prime minus c double prime and the second mapping to c double prime. If we add these two elements together, they'll map to the sum of c prime minus c double prime plus c double prime, which is equal to c prime. And so we've found an element, namely c bar plus c, which hits the target c prime as we wanted. And that completes the proof of the second part of the five lemma. So putting the two parts of the five lemma together, if our diagram is exact at b c d and at b prime c prime d prime, and if all four squares commute, and if the vertical maps a to a prime b to b prime, d to d prime, and e to e prime are epimorphism, isomorphism, isomorphism, monomorphism, then we'll be able to deduce that the central map c to c prime is an isomorphism. And this is the way the five lemma is most commonly used in homological algebra.